A lot of the negative connotations surrounding organic chemistry is centered on the need to remember tons of reactions, and the MCAT is no exception to this. You do need to know a lot. Oxidation reactions are a decent portion of these, and this video is all about an easier way to remember them all. I like to learn them by reagent rather than by functional group, as the products of a given oxidizing agent do follow some simple rules that you can apply to multiple functional groups. Basically, this method simplifies things and gives you less to remember, which is always nice. So, this mnemonic is from GenChem. Leo the lion says GER. Leo, lose electron oxidation. GER, gain electron reduction. In orgo, we don't really use or care about this because there's an easier way, and that's to say if something is oxidized, it gains more bonds to oxygen, or fewer bonds to hydrogen. It's as simple as that. Typical oxidizing agents that you will see have lots of oxygen molecules in them, which make them easy to identify. If you get some reagent on the test that you have no idea what it is, but it has lots of oxygen molecules, you should think oxidizing agent. So the big oxidizing agent that you should know for the MCAT is KMNO4, potassium permanganate. As a rule, it will oxidize functional groups all the way to carboxylic acid. If you see KMNO4 on the test, think carboxylic acid product right away. I'll go through each of these groups on the chart to the right, as there are a few exceptions. So starting with alkenes, we do start with an exception. Under cold dilute conditions, reacting an alkene with potassium permanganate will produce a vicinal diol. Vicinal meaning the hydroxyl groups are next to each other on adjacent carbons. Geminal diols, or hydrates, have both hydroxyl groups on the same carbon. They are super unstable, spontaneously dehydrating, and are not produced in this reaction. Only vicinal diols are. Alkenes can also be reacted under hot acidic conditions. This reaction does follow the rule and goes all the way to a carboxylic acid. I'll be using this check mark to signify when something is fully oxidized on the chart. And note that two different acids are formed unless R and R prime are the same. And that goes for any of the groups on the chart with an R and R prime. Alkynes will also be fully oxidized to carboxylic acids. Primary alcohols follow the rule and are oxidized all the way to carboxylic acids as well. Secondary alcohols are another exception, as they are only oxidized as far as ketones. Now, this isn't something to the specific to the oxidizing agent, but rather secondary alcohols, and you'll see that other oxidizing agents stop at ketone as well. Tertiary alcohols can't be oxidized at all, as you can imagine the species would require five bonds to carbon, which just isn't going to happen. Aldehydes also follow the rule, they go all the way. So do alkyl substituted benzene rings. It doesn't matter how long of a chain R is, it just needs to have benzylic hydrogens, and it will be oxidized to benzoic acid regardless of the chain length. So that's potassium permanganate. Up next is CrO3, chromium trioxide, also called Jones reagent. It's used mostly in reactions with alcohols. It is a strong oxidizing agent, so it too produces carboxylic acids. So when reacted with a primary alcohol, that's what you get. And as I said earlier, however, secondary alcohols can only go as far as ketones, regardless of the oxidizing agent, so that's what's produced. Additionally, and I don't have this on the chart, Jones reagent will oxidize phenols. This example is an orthodiol, and when oxidized produces a product called a quinone. So on the MCAT, Treat Jones reagent just like you would KMNO4. They're both very strong oxidizers. Up next is ozone, O3, and it can oxidize alkenes and alkynes via ozonolysis. Anytime you see or hear lysis, you should think split, and that's what ozone does. It splits the molecule at the functional group, creating two aldehydes from an alkene, or two carboxylic acids from an alkyne. I'd like to say the rule for this one is that Ozonolysis yields products with as many bonds to oxygen as there were between the carbons. So a double bond yields two bonds to oxygen, and a triple bond yields three. And finally, PCC is a weak oxidizing agent. It will only go as far as a carbonyl. So it will oxidize primary alcohols to aldehydes. And in keeping with the rule of the secondary alcohol column, it will convert them into ketones, just like the others. So it's possible that you'll get an oxidation question without one of these reagents on the MCAT, and if you do, 
Just treat it similar to potassium permanganate, unless there's informa information in the passage that suggests you need to treat it otherwise. And that's it for oxidation. Here are a few questions. Pause the video while you work on them, and the answer slide will appear in about five seconds, so pause it now. And here are the answers. Pause the video again if you'd like to review them. If you have any questions about this video or about the problems, feel free to leave a comment and I'll get back to you. So yeah, you just learned a dozen or so reactions, but based on reagents, which simplifies things and makes it easier to remember, or certainly gives you a different way of hearing it than what you've been getting from your normal studying. I like to think my way is better, but whatever works for you, go with it. And I'll be doing the same thing with the flip side of the coin, reduction, in my next video.